So COP as an acronym means the Conference of Parties. This was the first COP that um, formally acknowledged that fossil fuels are the biggest contributor to the climate problem. I mean, of course, there were significant outcomes when you look at the Nairobi Declaration document. Um, but for me, I think some of the key outcomes was buttressing on the just energy transition, which is what are the resources that Africa has? Um, how do we drive towards green industrialization, but at the same time in a way that is just and fair? There are several reasons why, as Africa, we need to make an energy transition. One, just because it's good for the environment. We are bearing the biggest brand, so we have to come together right now and fix the problem. My name is Bill Handirango. I'm a co-founder of Jacob's Ladder Africa. I'm also the CEO of Great Carbon Valley, and I'm an Africa Climate Ambassador 2023. So my work entails intersecting climate change with economic opportunities. So what that means is at Jacob's Ladder Africa, we are trying to get young people um, into the green economy. So figuring out how do we make sure that we can get them the right skills to make sure they can participate in the green economy. At Great Carbon Valley, we're looking at how is it that we can enhance or um, take advantage of the resources we have in East Africa, especially our renewable energy resources, to help the world decarbonize. What that means is we have a lot of renewable energy. How do we marry that with the green industry that needs the energy to make sure that we're decarbonizing the world while at the same time creating job opportunities for Africa? The reason I chose to do what I do is a combination of two things. One, uh, we have the big challenge that is climate change, and it goes without saying that Africa is bearing one of the biggest brands as far as climate um, change effects are concerned. While at the same time, we have a very young population that will require um, jobs, or is already starting to require jobs and will require jobs in the coming years. And so being able to marry those two twin challenges um, is a key is a key issue for me. So how do we make sure that we can solve climate while solving unemployment at the same time? The Africa Climate Summit was a moment in time, if I might say that. Um, it was the first time, at least as, of, as far as I know, or I can remember where Africa was coming to the table and saying we want to be a part of the conversation on climate, um, in a sense, in our own terms. What, what the reason I say that is in the past we've been involved in climate conversations, but usually it's always been from a victim perspective where Africa is suffering, we need help. This was the first time we were coming together um, as a continent and saying we want to provide solutions. We understand climate is a problem, we need to discuss it, but we also need to discuss it from an African perspective. And so it was this aggregation of different countries coming in, discussing climate change at their own terms, also saying what are the opportunities, what are the problems, how do we solve them, how do we involve the outside world, how do we get the global north and other actors to come into into, into the conversation, but very much so on our terms as Africans rather than the other way around where it's always been us going out there and saying this is what we need. I mean, of course, there were significant outcomes when you look at the Nairobi Declaration document. Um, but for me, I think some of the key outcomes was um, just this uh, buttressing on the just energy transition, which is what are the resources that Africa has? Um, how do we drive towards green industrialization, but at the same time in a way that is just and fair? Um, the reason why that's important is you have different countries that are at different levels. So you have countries like Kenya that are 93% green um, in their energy. So you're not necessarily looking for a transition in that case. What you're looking for is how do we unlock more energy to be developed in this country for a green industry. Where else you have other countries that are either still using fossil fuels or, they need, or fossil fuels is a big part of their economic um, of the economy and so we need to be a little bit more deliberate about how do we help how do we have those countries transition in a way that allows them to develop allows them to utilize their resources right now to build a better future for their population but yet still keeping the larger goal at we're trying to become green we're trying to get to the place where as a continent we remain a net um, net zero contributor or you know we remain um we don't, we, don't, we don't become a, a greater contributor to the climate change problem. So COP as an acronym means the Conference of Parties, but for it to really make sense is to think of, is to remember that COP um, in this particular case is, is the, this annual meeting that happens that's you know, um, held, held by the UNCCC, which is a UN body that focuses on climate change. And traditionally it's been this uh, coming together of countries to negotiate on various key points as far as the um, climate problem is, is concerned globally. Of late, it's, act, it's um, also become a meeting point for different climate actors, so it's gone beyond just the government negotiators. So you do find it, you know, you find a lot of different um, climate actors, whether it's um, NGOs, civil societies, um, private actors, private, uh, private players, industry, etc., coming in and saying, okay, this is what we are doing, these are the commitments we are making towards, um, towards the climate problem. I think a big part of what came out from the last COP that's important for us to focus on was this was the first COP that 
um, formally acknowledge that fossil fuels are the biggest contributor to the climate problem. Of course, there were different countries that had different um, opinions on how strong that language should have been. But the fact that this was formally um, accepted, I think, is an important milestone. What that means for Africa is that if the world is going to formally or begin to shift from the fossil fuels, uh, we need to think as a continent, how do we prepare for that future? Um, how do we make sure that we are leading the, you know, the front, uh, we're leading the charge in terms of the development of renewable energy, starting to think about things like electric vehicles and just things that are a post-fossil future. It might still be a while before that comes, but um, I think the smart thing for Africa to do would be to begin to look at that future and work towards that future. There are several reasons why, as Africa, we need to make an energy transition. One, just because it's good for the environment. Of course, one could make the argument that we didn't contribute to the problem, why are we, cut, you know, why are we transitioning? But at the same time, we, could, we also look at it and say we are bearing the biggest brand, so we have to come together right now and fix the problem. Secondly, investments are going to start flowing towards renewable energy resources. Um, you're going to see less and less investments going into fossil fuels. And so if, I was, you know, if I'm an African country and I'm thinking about where are investments going, who will be funding energy in the future, the smart move is to move towards uh, where the funding would be going into. And thirdly, related to that, countries or the world is, starting, is going to start looking for renewable energy for its industry and other resources. And so again, positioning ourselves as a continent that will provide the energy resources that are needed um, for a just transition is, is a smart thing to do. And so... And lastly, we have we are sitting on more than forty percent of the world's energy, you know, of the world's renewable energy resources. Um, I think it's only you know fair and also smart for us as Africans to utilize the one thing that the world is looking for right now, which is renewable energy. So it's almost thinking about it as the new gold, as it were, of our day. Renewable energy is going to be a critical component um, in the transition or in um, the fight against climate change. We have it. Let's, let's find a way to utilize it, both for ourselves um, as a people, but also to help the world to decarbonize. One, I think, is just creating the right policies for energy, for renewable energy development. So the question is, can, you know, uh, uh, different countries need to look in, inwardly and say, how easy is it for renewable energy resources to be developed in their own countries? Um, are there, um, do we have the right policies? Are we attracting the right um, kinds of investments? So that's one big thing. I think the second thing is begin to position ourselves as a climate as an investment destination for green industry and there are different ways to think about that which is one how easy is it to get green industry happening in our countries um, are we thinking about things like logistics and how we can move goods out of our countries into other markets the other thing and then of course there's a the regulation around um, carbon credits and those kinds of things that are it's almost like this um, encompassing or ecosystem that ecosystem that's required for you to or for a country to move and say, to go out and say we are green investment ready we have the energy uh, we have the spaces for you to come and do your green industry oh and we have the right, right regulation that can help you either do your carbon market trading or whatever else is required so i think to a large extent investments will float uh, where policies and environments are, you know, are enabling. Of course, it's not as straightforward as that, but the one thing that we can play or the one um, critical role we can play as, an, as, an, as a continent is really make it possible for us to, um, to make for those investments to come in. The second thing is, I think, recognizing what we have and figuring out how can we get more value out of it. So um, thinking about the fact that, say, a just transition will require a set of critical minerals that are going to be needed, um, say, for specialized batteries. We happen to have some of those minerals in our continent. Um, do we know where they are? Have we mapped them? To what extent are we adding value uh, on the continent or, uh, versus sending them out as raw materials? Um, what's preventing us from doing value addition? What's preventing us from um, creating industries around that? And so the more we can try and retain that value on the continent, the better for us because not only are we growing our industry, but we're also creating jobs and just making it you're essentially creating a larger industry here. So rather than just being a net exporter of raw materials, um, we're actually becoming more of an industry player that people say, you know what, we need to negotiate with Africa, not just for their raw materials, but for their finished goods or for their almost finished goods. So I think playing a larger role as far as energy transition and whatever requirements are going to be needed globally for that, I think is, is an important thing for African countries to consider. For COP29, I think it's going to be interesting to see how they build out from this last year's COP around um, this fossil fuel transition, um, how we, you know, how much you move the needle um, on that front. 
And um, the other thing that I think is going to be important is to see whether these movements on Article 6. Um, this is a key one because hopefully it begins, us, it begins to get us on the pathway to have countries trading in carbon credits um, and ensuring that carbon removals and that can, you know, the um, carbon reductions and carbon removals are happening in the countries that they can and should be happening, where else, and being able to trade those um, globally. So I think there's still a long way for us to go as far as uh, not a long way, but there's still, there's still some work for us to do as far as Article 6 is concerned. So it would be great if by COP29 we've made some key steps and we are getting to the place where, say, Kenya can trade its um, carbon removals with other countries that need those credits. Um, so I think that's going to be, for me, I think it's an important piece. On Africa Climate Summit, um, again, it would be great for us to move from the declaration that we made in Nairobi and see and come to some tangible outcomes. As, as, as I said earlier, it's great that we came as a, con as a continent together and say this is what we can do. This is um, this is what our solutions. These are, these are the solutions we can offer. But I think it would be foolhardy for us to think that we can keep saying that. Um, over, you know, after a while, people say, "Okay, where is the action?" So I really do look forward to having some of the deals that were announced in Nairobi um, come to fruition, starting to come, you know, coming to a place where people are showcasing, "Here's what we announced in Nairobi. Here's what we've done. Here are jobs that have been created. Here's, here are policies that um, we've created. Um, here are investments that are being made." So really moving the needle from deals and announcements that were done in Nairobi to action. And I think the good thing about action is that it begets more action. So the more people see, oh, this was done, then it makes it possible for more action to be done. So really hoping that we'll move from conversation to action. I think the climate problem actually offers Africa a once in a lifetime opportunity to be at the forefront of leading and providing solutions. And so we need to lean forward as a continent, embrace this. In as much as it's a problem, it's also a great opportunity. So there's a question to, there's, there's, um, I would love for us to be able to lean in as a continent, as a, uh, create the right policies, create the enabling environment, create the right investments, and begin to industrialize on the back of climate action, create jobs for our young people uh, on the back of climate action while helping the world decarbonize. So this re really leaning into this idea of the opportunity that climate change um, presents, I think is a fantastic way for us to grow our economy.